So we got our part laid out from the height gauge so we know the length. Our 800 RPM is set in the machine. Our feed rate is set. Still working on both of them. Good. Still working. All right. So we're going to touch off on the end of the part. I'm going to blue the end of the part just because it seems to be, it shows up easier when doing a demonstration. I did notice some folks were getting a little confused when transitioning from facing to outside turning about where you touched off. When we're facing, we're touching off on the face. When we're turning OD, we'll come out and turn out, touch off out here. So let's go touch off on the face near the periphery. There you go. Set zero. Hopefully you guys can see that down there. Oh, shame on you, Damon. I wonder if any of you guys can see, but the feed shaft isn't turning down here. No, you, yeah, you can quite see it. Okay, so why not? Because the A is in. There it is. Okay, we're zeroed down there. Let's try a 30, 10, 20, 30. So remember, the Z doesn't measure in diameter, right? It's a direct read. So 30 thou depth of cut, we'll see how it goes. Out and down. And you guys can't see my mark. Let me see if I can get you changed up where you can see my mark a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will mark it a little better so you guys can see. You can barely see it there. Oh, and actually you can see it rather well, can't you? But I'll take my scribe here and I'll touch it up. Well, I'm probably going to mess it up is what I'm going to do. There. That's a little more obvious. Okay. Let's take another 30, 10, 20, 30. Height on that tool is looking pretty good, I guess. Not seeing anything too bad. I don't know what you guys are seeing. Let's go ahead and back that out now. Ten, twenty, thirty. Getting down to her here. Ten, twenty. Oh, I should have took thirty. Anybody know the tolerance on this feature? Yeah, it's a des it's a it's a fraction. This it's so it's a fraction, so it's a thirty second. And what's a thirty second? Thirty one. What's one divided by three? One divided by three? Thirty three 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 three. Okay, let's change out to our our OD tool. Our stock, my stock is one and a quarter inches. Some, uh, some of y'all were starting with thicker stuff. So we're going to be turning it down to this other diameter down here, this existing diameter, which should be an inch. <coughs> so we're going to be blending those dudes together. So after facing it, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, turn it down to an inch. Feed's going that way. Good. OK, we're going to touch off on the outside. I'll go ahead and blew it up. So you get a nice visual of it. We're going to be touching off near the end. This machine has a bit of lash, so I'm starting from a bit a ways back just to make sure all my lash is out. Okay. Right, let's check the height real quick. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Calibrated eyeball. All right, let's touch off. Looks closer than that. It is. There we go. So your ability to touch off lightly will affect um, when you're fine, when you're reading your when you're reading your diameter dial and you're getting down to the the size you should be. If you get a really heavy touch off, a real light touch off, your zero will be a little off. And that'll typically won't show up until you're down at the bottom of your dimension. All right, so let's uh, let's do a 60 thou. This tool seems to like a 30 thou depth of cut. Oh, I didn't get my little shield. I should totally do that. Someone grab me a shield off that sandwich board over there. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Okay, another 60. So on this dial, one complete revolution is a quarter of an inch. So once I get near that quarter of an inch, I'll start worrying about finished dimensions. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. 20, 30, 40. So I'm coming up on a quarter here. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this pass, so this pass on the machine, this is gonna be like a 15 thou depth of cut. It's gonna look bad, but I'm playing for my finish pass here, my last one. So I got this really bad chip Totally expected it. Ooh, there's a gnarly dude there, huh? Okay, now. I'm gonna show you some advanced witchcraft here, okay? I'm gonna feed backwards. So how I feed backwards is I take my feed lever, take it backwards. Now, what that's gonna do is when I engage my feed, it's going to feed away from the chuck. Anybody seeing what I'm fixing to do here? I'm going to come up here. I'm going to touch off nicely. And let's turn it on and see what happens. Big old surface area there. That's like a hundred thou, hundred and fifty thou contact area. That's why you heard the squealing. Now it doesn't look great, but now I'm in the zone for filing and sanding, blending this surface in to that surface. Okay, and I got a little ring there. Not uncommon. Okay, let's do this now. Let's lay out some features. So let me paint my part up. So at this point, you would file and sand that, okay? I already told you I'm not going to waste your time with that. Okay, so this next feature, so I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to cut this half inch. Uh, oh, do I need to zoom out? Or is I just... Yeah, I need to, thanks guys. It's a horrible position for me. So I'm gonna make that half inch radius. So that half inch radius is located one inch from the end of that other radius. So let's lay that out. How are we gonna lay that out, Damon? Good question. I'm going to use my calipers. I could use my ruler. Um, I don't know if you guys saw me pick up that little scribe. 
So that's a carbide tip scribe. So um, I just marked my part more visual, visible with that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my caliper for one inch. Upside down, so it's a solid chance. And this is the only time I ever use the wheel is when I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. Lock that dude down. Did I bump it? Oh, I'm a tenth <laughs> off. Okay, and I'm just going to line up one with the existing, and I'm just going to, ooh, she's warm. Funny how that happens. I have grabbed more hot parts while teaching, um, drill bits mainly, and then got rid of them real fast. Okay, so I got a little mark, and uh, let's get that guy out of the way for now. Let's get you out of the way for now. I am going to, so that mark isn't big enough. So I'm, my, my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that mark bigger. However, I'm going to go ahead and set my RPM for this tool before I fire it up. And that is 180, I believe you come up with, right? Yep. And I'm not using feed, so I'm just going to turn the feed off. Cool. So I'm going to bring this tool up so I've got something to steady my hand on. Because so I'm going to make a... I'm going to mark that, that line a little better. There we go. A little calibrated eyeball. And that is the inside edge of my tool. So now I'm going to bring my tool over. May I have some cutting oil, please? Thank you. So now I got my tool lined up. I'm gonna lock the carriage. We're running a little low. If you guys need to fill up your cutting oil, it's that black drum up there. Okay. Now, let's touch off. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't check the height of this tool. Shame on me. Ooh, and I am low. You guys know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, that's good, huh? Just a little. I am too low, I believe. Little bald spot look in the camera. That's looking better. Snug it down, let's come back and get set up. Wow, nudged my part. You see where I hit it? Huh, wonky. Okay, so that is the inside. So it's gonna be this side of my tool. That looks good. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, touch off. That's what we're doing next. Because I hit it with my tool and I came back and I moved it in the chuck. Should be able to recover from that all right though. All right, yeah, see that? That's horrible. Just gonna stop that from um, scrubbing against my tool while I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna need to go in three eighths of an inch. Okay, that is 375, 0.375. So, back out. So one time around is quarter inch. So how much more do I have to go? I have to go 0.375 minus 0.25 to see what else. Okay, so I'm gonna go a full time around and then point one, two, five after that. Well, gee, Damon, if I would have broke it down a little easier, 0.25 is two eighths, and I just need one more eighth to get the three eighths. Math. Okay. Glad I was able to help. All right. Let's see if I can uh, see if I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stay out of your way for this or not. Let's see if I can come out here maybe. Not too bad. All right. 
Core intact. So we need to be making a chip here too. I need to see curls coming. I think I listened to this machine over here squeal for about a half an hour the other day before I finally came out and just turned it down to diameter. What are we doing? Not quite to our quarter yet. Oh, this thing isn't focusing for nothing, is it? Machining by computer monitor. Coming up on 22,000, still plunging. So our 50 SFM's working pretty good. Our surface area is getting pretty big on this cutter. I'm really surprised she's not squealing. Okay, there's a quarter. One, two, five more. Come on. I hope these cutters work. I really honed them up pretty good the other day. 30 thou. So I'm getting flat sides on there because of the way I modeled it and then the tools that I gave you to do it. Not a fantastic lesson in proper modeling. Uh, okay, 120, 125, and stop the spindle, and let's measure. I should have somewhere near uh, 625. I don't know if we're going to be able to see anything. Try to use the points again, not the big flats when you want to register in there. 655. Five. So 30 thou off. What's my, it's a, oh, right on. So this was a fractional dimension, which is 0.3333 of my tolerance. So once I get in there filing and sanding, I'll be in. So that's done. And I hope yours all goes that smooth. Okay, let's change this puppy out. Okay, now we're gonna get into some advanced ninja stuff here. Um, the main intent of this assignment is you just getting time on the machine. And this is one of those times where you're gonna have some fun on the machine. So we have to turn that, well actually, hold the phone Damon, we have to turn the radius. But first, before we set the radius to help us out, let's set the diameter. That's a different diameter, right? That's a 7 8 diameter. So let's, let's turn that to diameter first. I didn't even check what this other one was. Did I put that rag somewhere? Since the spindle isn't turning, I can wipe this off without worrying about getting tied up. I don't know if you guys will be able to read this or not. Now what's behind it, isn't it? Anybody read upside down? Oh, fourth thou over, right on, cool. That's gonna, that's gonna buff out. So, let's turn this diameter. Um, I'm gonna feed this way. I need to get my RPMs back. Yeah. Good, all right, let's touch off on our one inch diameter and go down to seven eighths. So I need to take one eighth off. Okay, so we're going to touch off on the outside. Gently. Boom. Let's turn this guy zero. Dial in our 60 thou cut. Contact. 
I'm only taking off an eighth. Hopefully I can do without my shield. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Let's take it all. Go big or go home. And this should be seven eighths. Now, since it has to be filed and whatnot, I'm not worried about dragging my tool across it. Eight, seven, four. It's tough being this good. Oh, did I tighten that? Yeah, I did. Leaving the tool loose is, wouldn't be the first time I did that, especially having to talk and think and act and not get hurt. Okay. What happens? It, it, it doesn't come off, but it's loose. You cannot get a good cut. Uh, you have various depths. It's, it's no good. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to back up a little bit here. And I'm going to blue it for the sake of visual. But now I need to make that radius. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to freewheel two, two controls here, and you're only going to get it close. You're going to spend a lot of time with a file getting this thing right, okay? So, I like using this cutter for it, and if you can picture this thing, if you can get a visual of what you should be looking at when we're done. Um, so, all all the materials coming off of these corners. Okay, so I'm going to spend all my time on these corners. Don't know if that made any sense to you, but being able to visualize what you're fixing to do will usually help you. All right, so a little bit off of this corner first. Come back, do it again. Oh, all this lash is really something. Anybody think I've done this before? I do this about three times a year. And that's only if I have to only demo it once per class. But turning it to that 7 8 diameter really helps me visualize what I need to be seeing here. Okay, let's stop there. So how you use radius gauges, you're not going to see it from the camera much, but you come on the front and you look down from the top. Okay, so we see that I'm not hitting, not hitting, and then you're hitting here and here. So where it's hitting is where I'm gonna take stock away. So now I need to come back farther. I've been just worrying on that first half, but now it's hitting back here. How is that diameter? Not too bad. So now I'm gonna start stepping back farther and coming down with it. Now, unfortunately, I only have one radius gauge. That was pretty good. I'd do another pass like that, and I'll probably be down to my file. Starting back on that blue area that I haven't touched yet. All right, and that should be about it for my, for my uh, cutter. So now I am just filing. Any questions besides how you do that? All right.